Aggieland.com. Aaron, what's it been like just uh, being here and getting acclimated to Aggieland? It's been good so far, you know, just, just obviously getting in before recruitment was over. It was nice being able to get on the road with some of the guys and really, you know, get a feel for them personality-wise and then obviously being able to get, get in the meeting room and meet with those guys a little bit and have a chance to, to get to know those guys has been great. So. Um, so far, so good. The family's all moved in. We're, we're in a house, and we're, we're you know that, that makes everything twice as easy. And uh, you know, just just so far with spring ball, it, it, the transition's great when you can get right on the field into 6 a.m.s into spring ball, and and it's it's it kind of like slows everything down for you. And now uh, coming to an end, it, it's it's been a good spring so far. Well, Joel of Buchanan, Tech Tech, do you have a feel for the? Uh for the quality of the, the hand you've been dealt. Yeah, you know, I think as you watch film from last year, you, you kind of watch the guys work, you watch the guys out in practice and how they're doing, you start to get a feel for each guy. And, you, you know, there's only so much you're going to gain from a spring ball, in my opinion. I think, you know, you obviously have to get out and put those guys out there on Saturdays and really see what they're about, see who's going to step up and who's going to really make plays when the lights are on. But, uh, yeah, the, the group's been doing a great job. They're working hard every day, you know, is a different challenge. And each guy has their different challenges that you work through. And I think as long as those guys have, are going to work and continue to get better, not only through the spring, which they have, but throughout the spring at the, at the end of it and then the summer, uh, we got a chance to be a, a really uh, great group, in my opinion. And, and as long as, you know, you continue to get Josh Reynolds healthy and those guys, and, and, you know, I think he's obviously a big part of this offense, a guy that we need out there. And, you know, I haven't had a chance to put my hands on him yet, but, um, you know, it's going to be good to get him back. But, but with the way the group's progressed so far, you know, really, really excited about what the future holds. Coach Robert Suss of the Bryan College Station Eagle, what's your thoughts on a rotation versus like Jake? Do you have X amount of players? Do you want to see certain players like a Reynolds, you know, for more plays? What's your philosophy versus him? Well, I like to I like to really play a lot of guys. I think it's a good thing. I think it keeps the room alive. You know, when only four or five guys are playing, it's tough. You know, those other guys tend to just get caught back and they're they're not, you know, as aggressive or, or certain things that you like them to be. So playing a lot of guys is good, but obviously. You know, when the money's on the line and you're in the red zone, you're in the third down, uh, th those type of situations, you want to have your guys in there. You know, you need those guys, but there's so much more time. You know, a lot of things could happen between now and the fall. You just have to go out there and, and see what hands are dealt at that point. But, you know, you know, it's it's just kind of a different feel. If, if a guy can handle 70 plays and he's your best player, we'll keep him in there for 70 plays. If a guy's going to get tired once he gets past 60, we'll try to keep him at 60. And that's, you kind of just have to have a feel for that a little bit. But, um, you know, I think as we go in the, in the fall, that, that'll kind of shake itself out. But, um, you know, right now I'm just trying to see how these guys are doing, see how they're getting better every week and see how much they can handle when the fall comes. Brent Sornum in the Eastern Chronicle. When, when were you? first aware of Kevin Sumlin's offense or where you kind of started following what he was doing? Well, I mean, I think as a, as a football coach, as a fan, you kind of understand what this spread has done. And you look, you know, when I was coaching and I was GA at New Mexico, he played against Mike Leach and it's, it's, it's kind of similar to what those guys are doing. And, and you kind of understood what they were doing and why they were doing it. But until you sit down and really get to put your kind of head in the playbook a little bit, see the film, uh, it's 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 different and, and it's good. You know, it's a great offense. When you look at the teams that are out there doing it, the West Virginias and the obviously the Washington States and still Texas Tech and, and, and those guys, I mean, it's a great offense. It puts up big time numbers. It's why I was so intriguing of an offer to come here. And, and you know, it was, it was a tough decision to leave, but just seeing the possibilities, what this group had, who they had coming in with the also, you know, kind of the, the ability this offense has to score so quick and so fast. I just, I loved it. And, um, you know, obviously Coach Sumlin's a, a big time name, a guy that grew up in Indianapolis and, and understood that part about him. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a very special deal. And as I've been here for a couple months, you begin to realize how special of a place this is. And, and talking to the guys that have been here before, players and coaches who have been here before that have now moved on and seen these new facilities and all the different things that it's brought. Uh, there's a lot of excitement right now, and you know I'm just another person to get on the get on the boat. Hey, we've heard a lot of good things about Ricky Fields Jones. What did you identify as some of the areas that you felt like he that he needed to work on? What have you done to help develop? Him? Well, I think the biggest thing with Ricky was a uh, was develop some consistency. You know, he had a couple games last year where he was out there early on in the year, and he looked like he was about to take off and 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 really have that year that everyone expected him to have. And later on in the season. Uh, you know, he had some games where he wasn't a, a big factor, and, and that, that's kind of the challenge I gave him was every day you're out here in spring ball be a factor, and he's done that so far. He's had an amazing camp. Uh, the guy's gone and made plays every single day, uh, continues to get tougher in the, in the run game when he's blocking, 
And uh, that, that's such a critical deal for Ricky. He's 230 pounds. He, he needs to be a guy that can be a physical presence out there all the time. But so far, what I've seen of him is, 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 is just great things and, and a guy that still has the ability to get better. And, and, and that's great for him because he's got things to work for to, towards the fall. And uh, look for him to be a breakout player for us this fall and, and be one of our leaders on the offense, which we need right now. And what have you seen from Speedy? And has he been limited at all? Yeah, just a little bit. But, you know, he's another guy. He needs to take a big step from his freshman year. You know, he's a guy that has all the talent in the world uh, and just needs to shore up some things technique-wise and, and really just kind of just compartmentalize some things and, and get going in the right direction. He's done a good job. And, and I can't wait to really see what this year holds for him. And he's... He's got to do everything he can to just stay the path every day and, and, and just do what we're asking him to do and not try to get outside the box and, and just understand why we're doing things. And I think part of me as a coach, I like to explain why. I think if the guys understand why, they can be so much more productive in a day in and day out and meetings can be so much more productive. And, and a guy like Speedy, who's played quarterback in high school, those whys, Ricky, the whys, they, they mean a lot to those guys. So every day is just, it's, you have a group of guys that continue to get better and it, it starts with those guys at the top and, and even the guys on the bottom. They gotta they gotta step up and get their stuff together because if not, they're not gonna play. And that's that's a challenge to those guys, but it's a good challenge. And there's been some guys that I wasn't so sure about when we came in the spring and all of a sudden you're looking at the Boone Niederhoffers and going, This guy's taking a huge step this spring. And you look at a guy outside, Damian Ratley, who who just got here, he's progressed tremendously this spring. Uh, and, and, and Frank, I mean, Nacho's done a great job over the last three or four practices of just trying to understand what's going on and making some plays. And, you know, now it's up to them for this, like I said, this end of the spring and the summer to, to take their game to the next level. Can you explain that why? Does that carry a little bit more weight because of your NFL experience? With these guys? Well, I think they understand that if you want to get to that next level and you don't understand the whys, it's really hard because everybody on defense is so smart up there. Uh, the guys, the quarterbacks throwing you the ball, they know why. So if you don't know why, that's a big issue. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, there, there's guys in this room that are next level players. There's guys in this room who will play that aren't next level players. But if you understand the whys and they know that I understand the whys, it just makes it easier. But I think the credibility always helps and uh, you, you never take that for granted. Didn't know Speedy out there today. Any particular reason for his absence today? Uh, he just had some stuff he had to, he had to deal with and he'll be back rolling. I tell you, Christian's done a great job this spring, and uh, he, he's a guy, like you said, came out with a lot of hype, and he, he's doing a great job of living up to that right now. Um, he's done a good job in the slot of, of using the, his size and his speed to, for some matchup uh, you know, problems right there for the defense, and uh, he's a guy right now, again, that just every day is getting better. He's learning. But the big thing that I love about Christian is he wants to learn. He wants to know why. He's the guy studying extra film all the time, and, and you love that. He didn't come in here with a big head and thinking, I'm this high-recruited guy, and I'm going to just go around and just figure this thing out. He's come in with a purpose, and um, you love that about the kid. Every day, um, he makes me a better coach, and I make him a better player, and you love kids like that, and he's going to have a bright future here. Receivers going to be the strong part of this uh I'd like to think so, you know, and, and if you look at the group as a whole, um, you're really too deep at every position, and, th and that's a good deal, you know, because if a guy goes down, you have the ability to slide the next guy in or move a guy over, and, and, and it makes them practice really hard every day because they know that if they're not in, the next guy's going to step up and play, and he's going to do a great job, and, and that really, for, as a coach, you, you, can't, you can't do a lot of things, but if you provide the depth, it allows them from a practice standpoint to have to be competitive on a day, daily basis and not even just in this drill or this drill, it's the entire practice. And guys understand that. And, you know, like I said, they've been working hard and, and there's going to be some guys that, you know, come come the end of the spring are going to have to realize where their role is. And if that role's a, a guy, a role for a guy who's a scout team guy that thinks he's supposed to be playing, that sometimes that's hard to take. But you know what? That's this business. That's this team. And we're moving on with the guys who we think are going to make plays on Saturdays. If you're not that guy, then we'll move on without you. And, and that's kind of been something this spring that I think a lot of guys, not just in the receiver room, but on this football team have began to realize that, you know, we're, we're not going to sit back and wait for you to figure it out. We're rolling and we're, we're, we're here to win an SEC championship. If you win an SEC championship, it's proven you're going to be in the national championship hunt. 
and uh, you know we don't have time to wait for guys to come on. You're, you're either on the ship or you're off the ship, and, and that's that's the mentality that we have in our room as an offense and as a football team. And, and Coach Chavis has brought that to the defensive guys, and I tell you, it's as competitive a practice as I've been around, and that starts with Coach Sumlin. And you know, I'm I'm a real competitive guy. You guys will get to understand that about me. Um, I'm 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 not I'm not going to sit back and watch a guy not compete. You know, I'm just going to tell him to move on and go somewhere else. I'll recruit somebody else who will, and uh, that's. That's just kind of the way I'm built, and that's you know I, I it's just the way I've gotten to where I am. Uh, you know, I was a walk-on guy that earned a scholarship. I was a free agent that played five years in the NFL. I didn't get that from not working hard and not competing every day. I'm not going to let those players do anything to disrespect this game. And to me, being not competitive is the most disrespectful thing you can do in this football uh, game. And I think we have a lot of coaches who are built like that. And and you know, you look at. Coach Chavis and what he's come here to, he's so competitive as a defensive coordinator, and I love it. Every day he's trying to win and, and get these guys better, and, and he's making our offense better on a daily basis, and you know, you, you can't say enough about that. All right, Coach, thank you very much. All right, thank thanks, you. Thank you.